Hey Expedition Kids! I'm so happy to be with you today. And it is another great day to talk about Jesus in the Bible. And if you're watching this as soon as it airs, it's Easter Sunday. So, Happy Easter! Alright, let's pray before we get started. We want to make sure that we're always talking to God first. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us, a celebration of the resurrection of your son Jesus, of him conquering death. Wow! Thank you so much for sending him to save us, and thank you so much for raising him. You are wonderful. Be with us today as we learn this special lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen! Good job. All right, so today I want to review for a few minutes, and I'm going to ask you a few questions about what we've learned through God's big story so far. So my first question is, who did God make a promise to who would become the father of many nations? Who was the father of many nations? Did somebody say Jesus? It's not Jesus. We're talking about the beginning of the Bible. Right, Abraham. There you go. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, how about this? Did God's people always follow God's ways? Oh, no, you were fast on that one. No, they got into a cycle of obeying and disobeying. Psh, so bad. All right. So what did God give to Moses to give to the people as rules to obey and follow? Very good. The Ten Commandments. Super. And after the people were led into the promised land, they asked for rulers, right? So what kind of rulers did they get? Judges and kings. And there are books about them, right? There's the book of Judges, and there's the book of First and Second Kings. Yeah. So there's stories about their judges and kings. And we've talked about some of them. So, how would you describe the kings of the Israelites? Do you remember? Some were good. Some were bad. And eh, some were okay. Good job. That gives us a summary of what's happened so far. You know, of course, there's a lot more details than what I just asked you about, right? But it is important to remember how God's big story is unfolding. So today, we're going to talk about the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is the 23rd book in our walk through the Bible. So we're doing really good. 23 out of 66. Wow, we're like, we're like a third of the way there. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, so Isaiah 9, 1 through 7. This is one of those super, super places in our Bibles that you should listen and read carefully. So I want you to pause the video and look up Isaiah 9, 1 through 7. Okay, I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation or that's the one that I'm reading from, New Living Translation. And you probably have like an NIV, which is a new international version. So they're slightly different, not a whole lot, but slightly different in some of the words. So I want you to see how well you can follow along with me as we read this, okay? So we're going to start in verse number nine. Are you ready? All right. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali, they will be humbled. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. 
They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warriors and the uniforms blood-stained by war will all be burned, and they will be fuel for the fire. Okay, are you ready? This is a big part. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end and he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. <sighs> That's awesome. Who do you think that the prophet Isaiah was talking about? <laughs> yes, now you can say Jesus. That's right. During the time of some of the evil king's reigns, God sent prophets to give messages to the people. And one of these prophets was Isaiah. And the book of Isaiah tells God's people that they have judgment coming. They have not always made good decisions and there will be consequences for their choices. They are people walking in darkness. In the Bible, darkness usually is referred to as sin. Darkness is usually referred to as sin. Did that make sense? Okay, it did. So dark equals sin, right? And that was not a good place for the people to be. They needed light to come and rescue them. They were oppressed by their enemies, and they needed a rescuer. They had kings who did not always lead them well, and they needed a perfect king who would last forever. Thankfully, their darkness, oppression, and poor leaders would not last forever. Isaiah gave them a message of hope, too. He told them that one was coming who would take away the bad things and lift their burdens. This one would be born as a child, and he would be called the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, and he would reign as king forever. In a dark time, this gave the people hope. They had something to look forward to. God had kept his promises to them in the past, so they had to trust that he would do it again. They had the anticipation of this most special gift, a Savior that would come and reign forever. Let's check this out. Hello, Expedition Kids. Mr. Doug here. Wondering how many of y'all like presents? Mm, me too. One of the most common times we might receive presents is at Christmas. There's always a lot of anticipation. You might make a list of things that you like to have, or maybe you like to be surprised, not knowing what you'll get. Imagine seeing your Christmas tree with gifts underneath it. Big gifts, little gifts, all kinds of wrapping paper and festive bows. I bet seeing those gifts would make you wonder, huh, I wonder what's in them. If I had a gift wrapped up for me, I would wonder what was in it. I might feel it. I might even shake it. I would take a peek, maybe. Oh, I'm not supposed to do that. Someone might catch me. Waiting at Christmas to open gifts seems like it takes forever. But we know that the time is right when we get to open our presents, our gifts. They will be amazing. That might be holding something that we have waited for for a very long time. This is a lot like our Bible story today. There was a man named Isaiah who was a prophet. He gave messages to God's people. He let them know that they would be going through a lot of judgment. But despite that, their greatest gift was coming. It would be as a king who would reign forever. Jesus! They might have had a great anticipation waiting for that gift. 
Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Doug. That was awesome. It must have been hard for the people to imagine a king who would reign forever. They had mixed experiences with their past kings, and of course, none of them were perfect. The judges and kings and even the hand-picked leaders that God had chosen would not compare to the one whom God would one day send. We are fortunate, you and me, because we get to know the rest of the story. The Israelites were told of this promise and hope, but it would be many years until God sent Jesus to earth. We know that God kept his promise and sent Jesus as a baby. He is the Savior of the world. When he came, it was the beginning of his kingship. He lived a perfect life, and then he gave up his life to take the punishment for our sins and was sacrificed on the cross. But as we know, and as we celebrate today, Jesus rose and conquered death. And now we can wait for him to return again. Nice job. Very good. All right. Let's pray before we go. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us, the Israelites and the world, a king who will reign forever, the Prince of Peace, mighty warrior, everlasting God. Thank you so much for your plan and for those who believe in Jesus, thank you for their eternal life. We pray for those who may not be ready or believing yet, that they would soon understand and turn to you. We thank you for all that you do for us, but most especially for loving us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Easter, a great celebration of Jesus' resurrection. And remember, how could you forget on this day? Because he did it. He died on the cross and he rose because he loves you. So just remember that. And don't forget, I love you too. Have a happy Easter. Bye, guys. <laughs>